Hey everyone, Josh here. I wanted to share some more great tricks in extending Articulate Storyline's built-in animations with a quick how-to from a freebie I did a while back with some recent tweaking. This design utilizes a few different techniques, including grouping objects and applying animations to the group as a whole in each of the individual objects, using timeline triggers that initiate motion paths for content entrance and exit effects, and utilizing triggers to perform actions following an animation's completion. So let's get started. To begin, I am just going to create a simple rounded rectangle and apply design attributes that suit my liking. Next, I am going to add a motion path for the card object I created, so that it animates at the start of the slide. I will also adjust the timing so that it comes in a little quicker than 2 seconds, but leaving the rest of the settings default. A trigger is automatically added by Storyline that moves the object along the path when the timeline starts. This will be left as is, since this is the desired effect I want. In addition to the entrance path, I want the card to have an exit path, like it enters. To do this, I will select the motion path I just created and hit Ctrl C to copy the path, and then Ctrl V to paste it. Now all I have to do is edit the path options and select Reverse Path Direction to have the object move off screen to the left. Next, I want to add a trigger to show a layer when a user clicks the card. From the dialog box, we can have Storyline insert the new layer for us. Once I am finished and click OK to add the trigger, I like to rename my layers to match the objects that link to them, such as the name of card 1 for this example. To maintain consistency of my styles, I am just going to copy and paste the base layer object to the new layer. From here, I want to scale up the shape and remove the motion paths. Next, I will add any design elements I want to tie up the overall look and feel, including a close button, which will simply consist of a shape with 100% transparency and the letter X inside. When I am happy with the design, all of the objects are selected and grouped using the shortcut Ctrl G. For the group, I am adding a motion path with the direction of down and reversing the direction within the path options and extending its origin distance off screen.
In addition to the motion path animation, I am also tiering the entrance of each of the individual grouped items and adding different animation effects to each of the individual objects, such as fade or shape entrance animations. In addition to the entrance path, I want the group to have an exit path, so I will copy and paste the path and reverse its direction, just like I did with the base layer shape. For this layer, the trigger for the first path animation at the timeline start will remain. However, I need to add a trigger for the second motion path to move the group when the user clicks the close button. To animate our base layer object along its exit path, I will add a trigger with the move action of the base object when the layer timeline begins. Another trigger is created on the close button to change the state of the close button to hidden when the user clicks. Finally, a trigger is created to jump to the current slide when the group motion path completes off screen to activate the base layer object entry animation. When using this trigger, it is important to ensure the slide properties contains a reset to initial state when revisiting. Now, when I preview this, the animation of my objects on screen and off screen via the motion paths, establishes a feeling of continuity between both the entry and exit. The great thing about this is that it did not involve duplicating layers and extra design tweaks to accomplish the visual continuity. For more cards and reveal layers, all I need to do now is simply duplicate the original card on the base layer and adjust its animation directions based on its position on screen. As for the reveal layers, all I need to do for those is duplicate and change the visual design as desired and appropriately link base objects with the layers. One additional note, for each of the layers there should be an exit motion path trigger for each of the base layer objects, so that upon entering a layer all of the base objects move along their exit path.
Those are just a few additional uses of Storyline 2's built-in animations, including motion paths combined with triggers. I hope this tutorial provided some additional insight into many capabilities of Storyline 2 for your course development.